Hey everybody, this is TJR with a review of the Anniversary Super Deluxe Edition of Sabotage by Black Sabbath. Now, about a week or so ago, I did an unboxing video. And once again, when I do an unboxing video, some people refer to that as a review. That is not a review. That's just showing you what's inside, what it looks like, what you get. There was still some uncertainty in my mind at the time whether or not the actual release of the album in this set was in fact a new remaster. And also, I had not yet read the book. I had not yet listened to the bonus discs. I've also noticed that this particular set is not available on streaming. At least it's not available on Tidal, which is the service that I subscribe to. By the way, if anybody out there has Apple Music or Spotify, uh, let us know if this set, and I'm referring to the re-release of the album and the bonus discs, if they are available on your streaming service. So this is my review. Now that I've had a chance to read the book, listen to the uh, bonus CDs, and also listen to the album again in this set and tell you what I think of it. So first of all, I'm going to open up the box here again. And once again, this is one of my favorite covers here. I really like this cover. After I did my unboxing, one viewer told me that this was not the band's original intention. It wasn't their original vision. Uh, I would say that they still got pretty lucky with this, even if this wasn't what they initially wanted. This is a pretty cool cover. And of course, it's also complemented by the very cool back cover as well. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go back over the contents of this uh, set here and talk about it again. So let's start with the book, actually. Once again, you get the front and back cover. Very nice. And the book, I will admit, was very enjoyable, if brief. Primarily, the bulk of this book is made up of quotes, interview quotes with the band members during the time of this album. Also, it's made up of quotes from other music journalists of the time discussing the band and discussing the album. What I primarily got out of reading this is that at the time, the band was encountering a lot of money problems. They found out they were being ripped off by their managers and they hired lawyers to look over their managers and the lawyers ripped them off too. The reason why it's called sabotage is, or at least part of the reason why, is because they felt that their efforts to make music was being sabotaged. And in fact, there is apparently an engineer who worked on the album who erased one of their tapes. And he's even credited in the album credits as a saboteur on the album. Don't know if they fired him or not. They don't talk about that. But the quotes, uh, the text is, for the most part, really enjoyable. One thing that kept coming out of it was that through all of this, the band felt a sense of camaraderie and a sense of we're in this together and that the tough times held them together, which uh, was surprising. I had always been under the impression that at around this time, there was all kinds of tension and that, you know, they weren't getting along. But when I read this, it gives me quite a different story. Uh, I'm sure, of course, anytime you're in a musical marriage, like you are when you're in a band like this, it's this famous, there's gonna be some tensions as well. But overall, the, the quotes in this book from the different band members say that, you know, we all kind of just stuck together, you know, that it made them tighter. That's what I got out of this. The photographs uh, throughout this are really enjoyable. There's all kinds of cool memorabilia photographs. And I should be pointing it this way so that you can get a better look at it here. Um, there's lots of news clippings. I didn't read all the news clippings because some of them, the print is so tiny, even with glasses, it's almost impossible to read. If you got the vinyl set, I'm sure you've got this a lot larger, it's probably easier to read. I'm not sure how much you're meant to read the newspaper clipping so much uh, as you are meant to read the what's actually the actual text of the book, of course, though. And by the way, I didn't buy this on vinyl uh, largely because of expense and also because I was able to get this set here on CD for under $30. It's been retailing new for around 45 to 50 bucks. And of course the vinyl set's quite a bit more. But I was able to pre-order this for under 30 bucks, like around 25, $28 roughly in that range. 
And so it was just a no-brainer. I was going to go with the CD edition. Uh, I've mentioned this before. The period that this album is from, uh, the mid-later period of Black Sabbath, is my favorite period. Albums like Sabotage and Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. And I'm hoping that there will be a set like this for Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. I'd be really looking forward to that. Anyways, though, but getting back to it, the book itself, very enjoyable. Brief, but very, very enjoyable. Lots of really uh, enjoyable photographs and supplementary uh, pictures of, of memorabilia in here, program, tour book covers, and uh, different 45 releases and how they looked. And you may remember that when I did the unboxing, let's see if I can find the page here, I had mentioned, I would pointed out a picture of what looked like a fried egg. And I thought, what's this about? And it's right here. This is the actual record label that is on the German version of the album. So that's the book. Uh, the tour program book, of course, I showed you. This was a replica of the tour program book. Um, it was enjoyable to look at then, enjoyable to look at now. Lots of great photos. This is a nice little time capsule of what it would have been like to be around then, to go to the concert and buy the tour book. And uh, no real text or anything except uh, a little bit of an introduction here at the beginning. And, uh, and then of course, just all the photos, the band members' names and what parts they play in the band, which we all probably know because if you're a big fan of this band, you already know at any rate though. But yeah, that was a fun little, just nice little souvenir you know, a little extra. Well, real quick, before I talk about the discs, I did mention the poster that came with it when I did the unboxing, and I expressed that I didn't think this was all that great looking of a poster. It's basically the tour poster for the tour here. To be honest, I think we should have had a poster of the cover. Uh, I think that would have been a lot cooler. In fact, maybe two posters, the front and the back cover. I think that would have been cooler, but oh well. And like I said before, it's, it's hardly a deal breaker for something like this. So now let's talk about the actual uh, discs inside, the actual audio content. So I did find out after plugging this in, importing it to my Apple Music, and after uh, doing some research that this is in fact a brand new remaster of the album. So I did compare it to my last version. And I will show you some uh, images here uh, of the of the song opened up in Audacity in both the previous version and this version. Now you might especially notice here on Hole in the Sky that there's not a whole lot of headroom on this uh, remaster in comparison to the previous one. I would say this is about as close as they can get without totally brickwalling it. And for some people, this might be absolute brickwalling. I listened to this, I still found this enjoyable. I still think that the remaster uh, works. It hasn't been completely brick walled to where there's no longer any dynamic range. I especially really liked it on the track entitled Superzar, which is the instrumental track that uh, hopefully you're familiar with. I think it's one of the best tracks on the album. In fact, at some point I should do a video about Black Sabbath instrumental tracks. I think they're highly underrated. Uh, but I thought that one particularly sounded good on this remaster, especially with the vocal choir singing. I thought that sounded really excellent. But overall, this remaster works for me. I thought it was good. I don't think it's brick walled, even though it does look pretty close to it when you actually look at the audio file here in Audacity. Uh, the one complaint that I will ex express again, uh, that I expressed when I did the unboxing, is this very weird kind of envelope packaging they gave it here, this very loose uh, packaging where the CDs just plop out. No matter what you do, they just plop right out of there. I, I'm glad they put them in these little uh, envelopes here, sleeves, so to speak, for the CD itself. But I, couldn't they come up with something a little better for the packaging? Couldn't they at least put it in a nice, simple vinyl sleeve reproduction that's tighter, that holds this in better, that you could actually put in your CD shelf where you have your albums and be able to pull it out without it flying out on you? Um, yeah, I just don't know where their heads were at with this and who thought this was a good idea. This is my only real complaint, and I dislike this even more since I last mentioned it. Otherwise, though, it's a pretty good remaster, although I would say the difference is still very small compared to this. 
and compared to the previous remaster, uh, which I have that's back from 2006. It's just a very small difference. It's noticeable, but still small in my opinion. It's kind of up to you what you think, honestly. Once again, on some tracks, it was more noticeable than others. For me particularly, that was with Super Czar. That's where I really felt the remaster did a great job of improving uh, the track. Okay, so let's move on to the other discs. Now, we also have the single here, which uh, on the vinyl edition, of course, was an actual 45-inch single. And the novelty of having that vinyl single kind of loses some of its appeal when the single is on one disc here, which is basically two tracks. And ba this comes with a, uh, a slightly uh, modified version of the song, um, Am I Going Insane? It also features Hole in the Sky, but the version of Hole in the Sky on this is the actual album version. So there's nothing different about Hole in the Sky on this. There is some difference between this version of Am I Going Insane and the version that's on the album. So I only imported that particular track into my Apple Music because the other one is just the same thing that I already have. I'm just importing it over twice. So, you know, but like I said, I think that maybe the thing they should have done, because this is a CD set and not a vinyl set, is they should have just included the 45-inch version of this track on this disc as like a bonus track. Uh, just to make this a little bit different. That might have been a better way to go than to toss in this, you know, as well. It, it, it makes sense when you include it as a 45-inch vinyl single with the, the single packaging, the Japanese single packaging that it's, it's set up with. If you ever look at that, you'll see what I mean. But it doesn't make sense as much with this, just putting a CD in there with this. I mean, um, it's better than not including it, but I think they should have just made it a bonus track for this. Anyways, though, these are minor complaints. So now we have the last two discs here, which are the live concert discs. Now, first of all, I will say, disappointed that there weren't any demos or work in progress tracks. I always appreciate those, but there's none of that here with this particular set. Uh, what we do have are some live recordings, and I had had one viewer, after I did my unboxing, who really uh, spoke negatively about this and said they were just some crummy MP3s, they sound terrible. And I'll be honest, I don't often always expect the sun and the moon and the stars when it comes to these anniversary sets and they give us like a live recording. I remember the Jimi Hendrix set for Electric Ladyland. The live recording uh, disc that you get with that one is, shall I say, the quality is pretty crummy, but it is Jimi Hendrix and if someone said to me, hey, yeah, I got this bootleg concert of Jimi Hendrix. Do you want to hear it? Of course I want to hear it. And these are better than the concert in that Hendrix set. These are audio quality better, in my opinion. They're not that bad. And I still was very appreciative to get to hear that Hendrix concert. And I'm appreciative to get to hear these Black Sabbath live tracks, too. Uh, there's a lot to enjoy in these, although there are a few things that I will be critical about. And actually, there's one thing. I will be critical about in these live tracks. By and large, the band plays really well in these recordings. The only aspect of these live recordings that I would criticize have to do with Ozzy's vocals, not on all the tracks, but on some of them. On some of the tracks, his vocals are spot on, and he is fantastic. But on some of the vocals, he is rough and not in a good way, unfortunately. Uh, however, though, in spite of that, there is still a lot to be enjoyed with these. And for me, the most enjoyable part of listening to these was hearing Tony Iommi play guitar live. And, you know, Tony Iommi, I don't know if he gets always the credit he deserves for his creative abilities. And also, he has had to overcome a handicap in his lifetime, insofar as being a guitarist. That he can play as well as he does with this handicap to me is amazing. I'm not sure that I could keep playing guitar if the same thing that had happened to him had happened to me. I guess I'd really try, you know, but I mean, he had quite an, uh, an obstacle to overcome. 
And I understand when he first lost the tips of those fingers, he actually had to kind of jury rig his own solution with thimbles that he attached to his, his, the ends of his fingers. Since then, I'm sure he's had something much more professionally created for him. But to be able to play, especially if you can't touch, feel the touch of what you're doing, um, I can't imagine what that's like and still play expressively. And he plays on some of these tracks. His playing is amazing on some of these. Uh, and he steps above and beyond what he did in the studio and really shows that he can really play really well and just really deliver the goods. And so I really enjoyed hearing his guitar playing. To me, that was a real revelation. I'd always known he was a good guitar player, but this was a real revelation because I heard him live and I heard him stepping beyond what he may have originally done in the studio. And so uh, kudos to him and also kudos for the band as well, everybody, including Ozzy. Uh, I think Ozzy's a really uh, good rock vocalist. Just on some of these tracks, his vocals were a bit rough. And, oh well, I guess that's what they had to work with for this. Everybody has their off days live. Sometimes one member doesn't play as well as another. Sometimes the lead singer doesn't sing as good on this song as they do on another song. It happens, you know. Um, rock and roll is not perfect. Um, nothing is ever perfect, but you know, you always want to strive to always do your very best when you perform. At any rate though, these were a surprise. I was not holding too high of an expectation for them. And I ended up enjoying them quite a bit. And I also imported them into my Apple Music so that I could enjoy them anywhere I go. So those are the live tracks. And that pretty much sums up my review of this box set. There is one other thing that I would say though. I would say that if I could be the person who made the decisions on how this set was put together, I would have done it the following way. This set was of course released as this CD set and it was also released as a vinyl version where it was all vinyl. To be honest, I don't think these live tracks need to be on vinyl. I really don't, I think CD's fine. And I think they should have released a set similar to what was done with the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young set of Deja Vu where you've got the new remaster on CD, you've got the new remaster of the album on vinyl, include the vinyl seven inch single, put these live tracks on CD, and of course, include the rest uh, at the larger size that it was delivered in with the vinyl set. And I'm talking about, of course, the hardcover book, and I'm talking about the tour program book. And, uh, and then of course, the only other thing would have been to maybe give us just a better poster than this poster. At any rate though, that's how I think this set should have been done. Of course, I know some people are gonna disagree with me because they're gonna say, like they did with the CSNY set, I don't need a vinyl record of the album. I don't own a turntable. And the vinyl record's just gonna bring up the cost of the CD set, which of course is gonna be cheaper than the vinyl set. I realize that. But I'm just saying, just me personally, if I could have had the ideal version of the set, that would have been it, to have the remaster on both CD and vinyl and then the rest of the audio material on CD, and of course the rest of the goo guys that come with this, uh, the larger book, the larger tour promo book, all of that. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the anniversary set of Sabotage, and I'm looking forward to hopefully, very soon, seeing a super deluxe anniversary set of Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Let me know your thoughts. Please leave a comment. As always, if you like what I'm doing, be sure to click like. Click subscribe and smash the bell notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. I wanna take this moment to thank all my patron supporters who are helping me to make more videos. If you'd like to be a patron supporter, please go to patreon.com slash TGR the original. Also, I wanna thank everybody who shares these videos on their social media. And I wanna also remind everybody that an unboxing is not a review. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.